Hello, my name is Nyx. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. And I'm so excited for this video. Oh my gosh! Art masking fluid. I never knew I needed this so much in my life till I got my hands on it and was able to try it. And oh my god, oh my god, this is a must have. If you're a watercolor artist, you need this in your life so what is masking fluid it's a medium in glue like form in which you apply on your artwork specifically on the parts that you don't want to get paint on or to preserve the part of the paper you can also apply it above a painting layer you don't wish to go over with the above layer that you're working on it doesn't permanently stick on your paper unless you left it there for way too long, used it while the paper wasn't completely dried, or even using the wrong type of paper. A masking fluid is most commonly used when painting with watercolors. It helps you to paint freely without the effort to not go over the parts that the paint shouldn't be. I hope this made sense because I just came up with this on my own. Before we start the testing and the review, here are the materials that we will be using. Of course, an art masking fluid by Windsor and Newton, silicone brushes, and two different watercolor papers, Canson XL and Canson Montval. These are the only brands of paper that I have at the moment. I didn't want to ruin the line art that I did on the paper so I decided I would use a scrap paper instead for the testing. I've watched a bunch of videos about masking fluid and how to use it. One video said you should stretch your paper before using it. If you don't know what stretching is, it's when you soak your paper completely and then letting it really dry before using it to avoid any kind of warping. So I divided each paper in half, left side is dried and not stretched, while the right side is stretched. The scrap paper on the left is the Canson XL watercolor paper, and the one on the right is the Canson Montfal Torchon. I started dipping my silicone brush on the masking fluid straight from the bottle, and started applying it on the stretch side of the Montfal in a stroking motion much like painting. I immediately noticed that while doing so, the paper started shredding. At first, I thought that maybe it's because I stretched that part which made the paper a little bit too delicate. But I also tried applying it in a stroking motion on the part where it wasn't stretched and the paper did the same thing. It was shredding. And same thing happened with the Canson XL. So please, when applying, do not stroke it like you're painting. But instead, dab it, pat it, press it, dribble it in. Not too hard, but gently. I applied the masking fluid on her hair and made sure I covered it completely. Make sure that you don't put a thick layer so it won't take forever to dry. If you put the right amount, it is surprisingly quick to dry. But I still waited about 5 to 6 hours just to make sure. Then did the same thing on the belly of this made up creature on the Canson XL. By the way, because the Windsor in Newton masking fluid has a little bit pigment in it, it's easier to work with as opposed to the pure white ones. While wet, this masking fluid's color is pastel yellow but completely turns bright greenish yellow when dried. I then started painting and made sure to go over the masking fluid just to see if it actually does its job and let it dry once again. I just used some cheap watercolors laying around and gave it some purpose. 
for product testing. Now, this is where the quality of the paper plays a huge part when using a masking fluid. The peeling part. I started peeling on the stretch part of the Montval which at first I knew the upper part was a fail because of the applying technique that I used. I didn't completely cover the area and because of the shredding, the paper became so delicate and damaged that some layers of the paper came right off with the masking fluid. Also the masking fluid turned into a gum-like state but to be honest, it wasn't sticky at all. Well at least on the fingers but it's sticky enough on the paper. On the lower part of the hair where I used a dabbing motion to apply the masking fluid, it was in a better condition but there were still so much paper that ripped with it. However, the left part which is not the stretched part, it was in better condition, no paints went through but there were still so much paper that ripped with it. On the Canson XL stretched part, peeling it was so much smoother and satisfactory. There was a tiny rip on the line art which you can easily fix by going over it with whatever tool you used for the line art. But then I started peeling on the part that I didn't stretch at all and it was divine. It was perfect. No ripping at all, no paints sipped through, it was just perfecto. So now that we know that we don't really need to stretch the paper and how to apply it, testing it out first on the paper if it's masking fluid worthy and also knowing that the silicone brush is perfect for it because it doesn't ruin the silicone, it was also so easily removed by just letting it dry completely and peeling it off and voila, it's like your silicone brush is newly bought, I started working on my artworks.
So this demon boy is drawn in the Montval and as expected, it ripped some parts of the line art. Oh man, I was so happy that I was given these masking fluid. It saved me a lot of time because I can paint freely. And now I can keep it in mind not to use the Montval if I wanted to make something with the masking fluid. I hope you guys learned something and was enticed to try it out yourself. Because if you're a watercolor artist or is just getting into watercolor, I highly, highly recommend that you try out a masking fluid. You're gonna thank me later. But I am thanking you right now for watching this video. See you again soon and bye!